Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today we will learn about loops in JavaScript, their basics, and how we can make one ourselves. And just to take note is that loops are or like the items in JavaScript such as an array and an object already has their own um let's say iterations inbuilt. So it's pretty much we're going to implement something like what they have what they already have and there, there are two types of loop loops if i'm not mistaken the first one is the while loop and the second one is the for loop so let's talk about the while loop first so let's say we have an array of items which would just be an array of numbers one two three and then in a while loop it's pretty much an if condition so while anything inside this parenthesis holds true we want to run the code inside the curly braces. So let's just say that we want to console.log items. Okay. And then if this is a condition, that means we need to have something that will hold true for us to run this code inside. So let's just say while index is less than items, items dot length. So how can we have the index? Or so what is this index for? Well, it's pretty much just something that we will increment. So let index equal zero inside the curly braces. Okay. So every time the loop finishes or every time the loop iterates over this code, and I forgot the curly braces, it was removed. We want to increase index by one. So that means that from zero, we will slowly go towards the length of the items. So in this case, the length of the items is three. So that means this should iterate over the items three times. So let's try that out. And let me actually just use bracket notation here. Save that. Go down. And as you can see, we console logged the items inside the list. Then that would be one, two, three. Okay. So now let me just comment this out real quick. Um, no, no, it's not how we can comment here. Okay, let me just comment that out. I'm pretty bad at new vim, please pardon me. 4j. Okay. Oh, and by the way, if my video is lagging, please excuse it as I'm using a low end PC this time. But yeah, let's proceed with the next one. So the next one would be another variant of the while loop. So that would be do and then while. So we want to do something. So do something inside the curly braces while this condition holds true. So in this case, index less than items dot the length. And just the same thing we can do. That would be console.log items index. So what is the purpose of this? Well, this can be used to execute code inside the curly braces once, even if the while condition or the condition inside the while on the first iteration already holds or is already false. So we can just save this and check that this will still work the same way. And if we change the code, the value of the index to be greater than the length of the items let's say four and now we run we can we can see that we get undefined that's because we run the code inside the curly braces of the do and while um calls inside um what did i say again we ran the code in here which is console logging the item or the um yeah the item in the variable named items and since the index that we're trying to access is four, which does not exist in the list right here. It, um, we got undefined. Okay, so let me just comment this out as well. For J. There we go. Comment that out. So now let's talk about the for loop. If I'm not mistaken, we need to go to the for loop now, right? Yeah. Okay. So for the for loop, it's much, com much more compact than, or than the while loop. 
So for the for loop, we have three stages. The first stage, first stage will be, um, will be the initialization. So initialization of a variable, okay? Let me just fix the comments real quick. Stages or rather statements in a for loop. Parenthesis. Okay? And then we have the second stage, which is the condition that is the same as what we have in the while loop. So that pretty much means if this condition is true, we will run the code inside the curly braces. Better to run the code inside the for loop or stop looping. So in case that it's false, that means we this loop is pretty much done. Okay? So that would be the initialization. So let's say let index equals zero. And it is separated bar, I excuse me, by um what do we call it semicolons okay so pretty much means that it's the end of the statement all right then we have the third stage so the third stage is pretty much what we do in the inside the while loop at the end which is to increment the variable that we are checking for its state for to check whether we want to end the loop or not and instead of it having or rather instead of it being inside the loops body or the code that gets executed it will be inside the parentheses together with the con um the declarations uh-huh here we go okay so the third stage that would be post the action to be done after the current iteration of a loop finishes typically used to slowly reach the condition to be false and stop the loop so the reason that we want to stop the loop is because we don't want to have an infinite loop that is the thing that we want to avoid all of the all of the time so it's pretty much what we call, call um, the error of maximum call stack size exceeded. That's because the loop just went on in to infinity and beyond. Okay? So in theory of the condition, as long as index is less than item start length, then of course at the end, we want to increment the index by one. So we can do it this way, this way, or this way. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, we can do it this way. I haven't really done it this way, the expanded form, but let's try. So items index. Let's see if we get the same um values real quick. Yes, we do. And of course it's much better to do it in a shortcut or the shorthand, which is either a pre-increment or a post-increment. Some people say that the pre the pre-increment is faster in this sort of situation in a for loop, but I'm not really too sure about it. If there is, it would be minuscule, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Hmm. So this is one of the ways, one of the ways that we can do a for loop inside JavaScript. Of course, this can only happen if we are dealing with arrays. Because pretty much, we are getting the index, right? So the item. And of course, that really depends on your use case. So for example, if you have an object, let's say, with the keys being a number, so one, two, I guess you can do it. You can access it that as well. Because to access values in an object, we can make use of bracket notation so object index something like that <clears throat> but yeah so let's move on to the next statement that we can make use of in a for loop so statement 
another for loop variant. And that would be using, um, let's say, it can either be, this can be anything that we want. So let var or const. Typically, you should use const just to not change the value of the variable. So we will declare a variable name here, const, let's say item. So there are two ways that we can make, um, we can do this. The first one would be in, and the second one would be off. So in pretty much mean a key. So this is used when you want to iterate over the keys in an object. So we can see that in action, if I just say have an object here, and say we have the name, or I guess we can name this a person. <coughs> the name, <coughs> excuse me, the name of the person and their occupation, let's say. Okay. So we have Aaron, that is my name. Occupation, student, I guess. And then the age would be 18 or 19 in this case. And then for const key in person, <coughs> excuse me, I have some kind of phlegm. But yeah, let's try the console log key here real quick. And we get an error. I guess, I think that's a maxim. Oh. Yep, that is an, that was an infinite loop. Huh. Wait, let me try it off. Why is that? I always used in, right? In person. Okay, let's try this. Still the same. Why are we getting once? Oh, wait, wait, wait. The one that we were getting was from this problem here. Pro was from this for loop above. Okay, I totally forgot. Okay, pardon me. I doubted myself in, in my knowledge in here, in this loop here, but this is true, or this is correct. It's just that I forgot to add the two addition or two plus signs above. And we should actually be commenting this out, so. Yeah, let's comment this out. Save that. And there we go. We console logged to the terminal the keys of the object named person. Okay? But now if we want to get the items, if I'm not mistaken this time, it should work using off. And no, it does not. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, that's my bad. I got carried away there. So off is used to iterate over something that is iterable or something that can be iterated over. So that is what I meant by, by excuse me, by what is implemented already by arrays in JavaScript. Okay. So in here, it's already implemented or the iteration is already implemented by JavaScript for us. So that means we can do two ways when we want to access, or we can do it two ways, in two ways when we want to access items in an array. So that would be either the first one, which is here, when using a for loop, of course, you're saying in indices or numbers, or if you don't care about um, getting other values and just the current <clears throat> item in the current iteration, that would be const item of items. Okay, so now if I console the log that, okay, <clears throat> console log this, and then comment this out for now. Save that. As you can see, it's still the same. Okay, and of course, since this is an array and not an object, we won't be able to get any keys inside. So let's just try to do this. Well, and technically, there's no keys. However, they can still be accessed using 
um, bracket notation. So I guess this is pretty much the same as the one in an object because to access an item in an object, remember, we can make use of bracket notation as well. So if I put a bracket beside the person object and put strings, we will get an instillicence saying that we can access the values inside using the keys. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. So I totally forgot about that as well. But yeah. So just take note of this is that when you use in, a keyword in, when trying to access items in an array, you would be getting the indices. But if you were to use off, that means you're trying to iterate over the array. Okay. All right. So now that that is out of the way, let's try to see how we can make our own iterate, iterative, um, iterative data. Okay. Okay. So, one example is if we want to make our person object iterable, okay? So, that means that in here, using the off, we will get the values of each key in the object, all right? So, we can just do that using symbol. So, symbol is an inbuilt object in JavaScript and access its iterator property. And this is a function that will return an object, okay? Um, I guess you can find the letter P, there we go. So we can do it this way. Um, where is it? This way. Or of course, we can do it this way. An anonymous function, okay? And I guess we can just make it more explicit. So there we go. So now let's say we, we can loop over through this um, person object. So we can have maybe, how can we do this? Maybe let index equals zero. And it, no, no, index equals, hmm, yeah, zero, I guess. And then, how can we do this? Um, because I'm thinking you see getting the keys, but that would deny the fact that we have the um iterator. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we can do it this way. Since this is just an example, I can show you a better one. But for now, let's do it this way. One keys equals. Or, oh yeah, yeah, let's go with this one. Object that keys person, so itself, I guess. Will this work? Mm, probably. And then we can just say return an object with the property next inside. So let's just do it this way as well. An anonymous, an anonymous function. And this will return. So if index is less than keys, so we can name we should name this keys length. So okay, uh, this is going everywhere. Keys length. Then we want to return. The value would be um what will be the value? Value is um person wait what? Oh okay okay wait is to go with it. Let's go with this, keys, and then instead of that, we can go with keys.length, then we can just say keys, then index, okay? 
And then, of course, it is not done yet. So, done. False. And we can just have it inside, like so. Or we can just post increment this. So, I guess we should talk about post increment and pre increment. I have a short about it, but I guess we can talk about it here since we're almost done. Um, this one would be done. True. So, this is just indicating to the for loop that this iteration is finished. Okay? Since we don't have a condition inside here, unlike the one above when using indices. Okay? So, I guess we can try that. So, first, let's see if we, we will be able to get the key symbol um, iterator. And we have an error. Oh, it's expression expected. Okay, that, that should be the error. So let's save this and run it. There we go. And if you noticed, the key is not included in here. That's because this is just a sign that whenever this object is iterated over, this will be the values that gets um, iterated over. Okay? Else, we will get the error that we got earlier when we did it or when we looped over the first one object using the off keyword. So, for const key of person. And of course, it's not the key anymore. So, const value of person. Oh, oops. Value. There we go. Like so. And as you can see, we got the values. And this is just a simple implementation and not really practical because we can do it ourselves. But I guess this is good if, you know, <laughs> for every object that we have, we can just have this. But in a way, we can still do it um, this way, which is much simpler. So let me just show you what I mean by a practical example, okay? So let me just go here. So that will be DOM mutations. Let's go to index mutations. So this, um, the credits for this would be a GitHub repository that I saw, which I will share with you guys. It is open source, but yeah. Okay. I am lagging. I hope the video is not lagging. Um, okay. But in here, if you noticed, we have a generator function, so a star symbol or an asterisk, and then just an async iterator. So this is so that it's non-blocking with the main thread. And of course, we just yield it. So for each iteration, we have this value. Okay. So we are not using return so that this, this just keeps on running infinitely. Okay. And this will avoid some complexity as well. It's very, very awesome, actually. And here, so the way that's the reason why this is done is because we want to keep on observing the mutations that keep happening on the DOM. That's why it's called DOM mutations. And then we want to resolve that. So once it's resolved, it's what we get here. Okay. So this one will yield a promise, this function will yield a promise con um, continuously, okay? And that promise will be awaited. So that means the return value or the yield value of this would be the array of mutations that we get, okay? And above that would be, um, that would be uh, iterated over by this function DOM mutations. So the array of mutations is yielded one by one. All right. And of course, to access that is pretty much the same method as this. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's talk about the post increment and pre increment actually. So let's go over here and just have const post i equals i guess we can have let j equals zero 
O star is equal to J plus plus. And const free I, excuse me, is equals to plus plus J. Okay. So we can just console.log J here. J. Then in here, we can console.log J. J. Okay, this should be J, not K. Console the log post i post i and of course the pi pi i okay so now if we noticed as you can see at first of course the j is zero and in the post i variable, we incremented j by 1. However, we, the, post, the value of the post i variable is 0. Why is that? This should be equals to 1. No? Well, the j would technically be 1 because it will be incremented. However, the return value of the post increment is 0. That would be the value before the number that is being incremented is, well, incremented, okay? So in this case, the value before j is incremented or increased by 1 is 0, okay? While for a pre-increment, that means that the return value of this operation will be the value after the number that is being incremented gets incremented. So in this case, since j has been incremented by 1, so now j is 1, on this next call on the pre-i variable, j would be incremented by 1 again, so 1 plus 1 is 2. And that is returned by the pre-increment operation, which is now the value of the pre-i variable. And yeah, that is pretty much everything for loops. And of course, this one is a is synchronous or it's blocking and the, the DOM mutations is asynchronous so there are two types of iterations oh, one thing to note is that a for loop is done on the CPU so that's why it's called blocking okay it's done on the CPU whilst a sync no uh, what do you call this a recursive operation like a function calling itself is not if I'm not mistaken okay but yeah so the trade-offs would be this one will control more more memory because this will be added to the call stack while the loop is used uses more CPU power okay anyway that's all for now I took so long to talk about the basics of looping but yeah, thank you for watching. I hope the PC did not lag at all. And I hope you learned something, as I did as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you had a nice day. And yeah, happy learning. Good luck on your development journey. God bless.